Hi friends, Kelly here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you um, something that is kind of driven more specifically to a certain group. Um, that would be the First Love Club. But I thought that I would go ahead and share it with everyone because I feel like this could also help um, benefit those of you who have been doing more scripture writing and it kind of goes hand in hand with my scripture writing. Um, if you haven't seen any of my scripture writing videos, I'll go ahead and post a link below and throw a card up here for you. So what I have here is called the Seasons of Faith Smash Pages. So this is a product put out by The Reset Girl. Um, specifically for documenting faith, doing list writing, scripture writing, um, things like that. So I have the fall seasons um, of faith in front of me here. And I'll, I'll go back here real quick and just show you what exactly the rest of this looks like. You can still pick up all of the seasons uh, in the shop, and I'll make sure to link that below. But it's basically a printable. And um, mine looks a little different because I like to go back and add other products in. But let me flip back to, and don't look at how much or how little I have actually done in this book. Um, this is a project that I love the idea of. I just have found it very difficult to work into all of the other things I have no time for. Um, but I bought each season as they came out with the intention of being able to go back and use it. Now, I've said that multiple times. I'm not so great at going back and working on projects, but I'm working on it. I'm going to try. So at any rate, this was the Seasons of Faith project um, for winter edition. So each season, Corey Speaker at the Reset Girl, um, more specifically the First Love Club, puts out these really fun um, little just smash pages. So you really can, they're very versatile. You can really use them any way you want. Uh, so there's typically some of these kinds of spreads and there's often a prompt like this one says God time. Uh, this one says winter love. So it's like creating a layout and I'll show you one that I've recently done. Um, you have some blank pages that you could really just use however you see fit. And you also have some scripture writing pages um, and some more space in there. So when this product is released, uh, it goes hand in hand with something that we also get in the First Love Club Clubhouse. For anybody who's not aware of what that is, um, the best thing I could kind of liken it to is maybe like a Patreon, but with a whole lot more bells and whistles. Um, there's foreign forums, there's chat rooms, there's, um, uh, there's just so many layers of goodness. And it's all faith-based, it's all uh, Christian-based. It's, it's basically this big, huge community. Um, so that is where this product and project is driven out of but you can purchase these seasons of faith uh, pages without having to be a member of the clubhouse and you can find more about the clubhouse in a link below um, let's see so as i said i've got multiple seasons here uh, summer was our most recent one so i've got a few things in there and then what i'd like to do is go back into my um, crafty playbook this is also a product that was available for many, um, for quite a few years there from the Reset Girl. I'm not sure if that's still something you can find and go back to. Uh, if it is, I will make sure to link it. Um, but I loved that. It was kind of the same idea, but there was maybe a little bit more prompting in it, activities, things like that. I loved that book so much. I went back and reprinted some of my favorite activities from previous seasons. So this is one of the summer activities, um, these DIY flashcards. Um, this was just one where you filled in squares. I just really enjoyed the practice of doing that and then just having some space to have fun. So that is kind of how I've chosen to use my summer pages. Now we are in fall. So each season in the clubhouse, we have a theme that we're working through. So this season we're working through contentment and that is important for this piece that I'm sharing with you today because I want to share what I have worked through so far and work on a process. So let me go ahead and get started. So to start out the project, the smash, pa smash pages, uh, we have kind of this really pretty mood board um, kind of curated here for us. So this is a great jumping off place. This is the space I usually pull my colors from. So I have built an entire kit based on this color palette. So everything I'm going to be working with today is based on a kit that um, I actually did share creating that with the uh, First Love Club clubhouse community. 
So I'll just page through here briefly. Um, some of this you will see in the smash pages should you purchase them. Some of them you will not because I have incorporated both the pieces from the clubhouse, which is um, a very special thing that we have access to, and then also into the um, smash pages. So I've kind of combined some pieces. Um, I should note that uh, I truly think you should go ahead and check out what the clubhouse is. What's unique about the clubhouse is that it's open for a season. So it's three months and the doors are shut during that three months. So there's a 15 day period, I believe it's 15 days, that the doors are swung wide open. Anybody could come in, check it out, um, or rather sign up. It's $15 a month. And there's all kinds of content that um, the community is both all contributing into and also receiving from Corey Speaker and um, what she's doing there at the First Love Club. So, okay, so moving on. So these are just a few pieces that were included as part of being a clubhouse member. Um, so I'm going to play with those at some point here. These are pieces I've pulled out of my fall 2019 playbook. Loved these two activities. So I reprinted those, added those into my book and uh, word hunt. I just love word hunts. So this is actually now entering into what the seasons of faith pages would look like if you were to just purchase that. So let's go ahead and take a peek. I have, oh, I take that back. I have a few extra pieces. Okay. I'm not sure if the bingo card is included in the pages or if it's the clubhouse. So forgive me if that's not included, but this is definitely included. So here's what I've already worked on. This is just kind of a collage to me of what a fall day looks like. So I just went on to Pinterest and a combination of Pinterest and my own photos. And I just snapped up, um, snatched up rather a few photos that really truly capture fall to me if I just close my eyes and imagine fall. Um, so that's what this whole page represents. And it was just, it's just really fun to play with paper um, and to kind of go into this imaginary world, if you will. So this is kind of how I've based my color scheme uh, again from that mood board. This is where this is all taking off of. And these are all little elements that I've used from the kit that I created. Some of these are from Illustrated Faith and Gratitude Document last year. I love these florals, um, the leaves. And then some of these other pieces like this camera, these blankies, um, this mug, those are all items from the Reset Girls Forever Fall collection, which you can purchase currently. Um, they do put things into the vault and they take them back out. Uh, this is currently outside of the vault, so or the vault is breached, as it were. So I have some more space to work through some more um, different um, collage boards, <laughs> whatever you call those. Uh, okay, so I've got some work there. This is the page that I am going to work on. Um, I'm either going to work on this page, and I'll tell you my idea, or I'm going to work on one that I've already started on. So. Um, let me just say what I was thinking of doing here. What I'm considering is creating a page that dives into the whole theme of fall, um, these fall seasons of faith pages, and that is the, the contentment theme. So we're really diving in this, this season into contentment. Um, what does that look like from a bib biblical perspective? Um, how does God want us to live a content life? What does that even mean? Um, so we're going to be doing scripture writing regarding contentment and the theme and idea behind that. And then just really kind of diving into what does that mean? Um, that even includes a fun crafty session I've um, either having, if this is when, depending on when you're watching this or have had um, a little crafty session with some of the clubhouse community where we are going to use our stash. So we're going to be content with the things we already have in our crafty stash. So whether you are part of the clubhouse or not, um, whether you're just watching this and um, doing script writing or do whatever you're, you're doing, hear me on this. Embrace contentment. Shop your stash. Create a kit out of what you already have. Trust me on this. It's actually quite... Um, what's the word? Encouraging, um, fulfilling it felt like a huge achievement to create a whole entire kit without having to purchase a single item. So back to what I was saying about this page, what I want to do is basically title out contentment and what does that mean? Um, so that means I'm going to do 
a deeper study into just that biblical theme. So that will look like this. These are four categories that the First Love Club Clubhouse is working through this season where we have some scripture writing. Now, because that is paid content, I cannot share that with you, um, but I can give you some ideas. If you're not in the clubhouse and you're looking for a themed um, scripture writing plan, honestly, just go to Pinterest. I was able to search in peace, hope, contentment, um, thanksgiving, pretty much any real theme you can think of. Um, you can find some sort of scripture writing plan. But I have another better idea for you. So let me just share with you these few pages and then I'll talk about um, how, I've, how I've approached this, this part of it. So let me show you here. This is the printable that I'm working off of. So it says scripture writing and it has these different categories. So the categories that we're working through here are gratitude, separation from the world, simple living, and humility. So I've already gone ahead and started working through what do those, what do those um, topics really encompass and mean. So what I'm going to do in this book is I'm going to actually go back into the latter half of this book where we have some space for some scripture writing. And I'm going to write out each one of the scriptures that are on the list of scripture writing that we have. But here, I wanted to kind of bring it all together so I have an understanding of what does it even mean for um, these scriptures, how do they line up, and what does it mean when I'm looking at gratitude or separation from the world, etc. So what I have done is I've kind of started it as if I'm doing a word study. So I've gone in and I've pulled out the word gratitude and I've defined it. I've also just listed for quick reference the different scriptures that um, I'm going to be doing later into the book. And then each page has been a little bit different. Um, for example, here I wrote basically a note to myself, um, and I kind of just summed up a memory of mine for being a little kid and remembering being taught to always start prayer with um, Thanksgiving. And that has stuck with me for my whole life. And I did not become a Christian. I didn't become a follower of Christ until 2015. So I was 30 something. <laughs> See, I was 30 something. Um, I would have been 36, 34, 36. Math. Doesn't matter. I was in my 30s. Um, but my grandparents are pastors, and so I still was exposed to VBS Bible, you know, Vacation Bible School, um, going to church with them when we stayed at their house for the weekend. Um, so all of those things. So I still had some exposure. So one of the things that I did pick up as a small child was um, praying, although I didn't do it probably very often. Um, I did learn, I remember distinctly learning that I should start my prayer with Thanksgiving, and that always stuck with me always stuck with me. And then, um, like I remember memorizing the Lord's prayer, things like that. So I wrote a little note to myself. Um, if you, um, have been around on my channel, you know that I will say this often. I don't love journaling. I really, really don't love it. I have no problem speaking and putting my thoughts out and talking. Um, I could do a video all day long with all my thoughts, but writing it down is so challenging for me. So whenever I find something that I feel like, okay, I can write this down, I try to do that, but we move on. And I did not journal on this page. What I did here was I took and I defined the words separate or separation. I chose to define separate and world from a biblical perspective. Um, so I have my definitions. Then what I did on this particular page was, um, again, I listed out the scripture I'm going to be writing. But then I wrote, I actually, I take it back. I did a tiny bit of journaling, which I forgot I did. <laughs> um, but then I just wrote out a few scriptures that also pertain to this idea. So how I did that was I went into my study Bible and I used Bible Hub. Uh, yeah, Bible Hub. And I, again, I looked up what does, what do these words mean? And then from there in the Typically in your study Bible, if you have one, and I highly recommend you get one, um, get one in the translation that is best for you to learn. I prefer the NLT. Um, in the back, you're going to find things like your concordance, 
you're going to find things like a dictionary, an index, things like that. So I simply went into my concordance and you can find a version of this online. Um, there's different, different ways you can access a concordance, but I just chose to use one in my study, study Bible. And I was able to go in and look up, um, look up the words. So for example, if I go to separate, separate, so separate, separated, or separates to set or keep apart to sort. And then I'll have to zoom in for you guys, but there are different scriptures that that word points to. Um, I did the same thing with the word world. And then any other words that I kind of feel like really hone into this same idea. Um, I went ahead and I found additional scriptures that are outside of this list that was created that spoke to me about what does this truly mean and helps me have an even deeper understanding. Now, what I want to say about that is that context, 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 context always spend the extra time to really understand who who's speaking is it paul is it jesus is it moses who's speaking who are they speaking to and um so you want to know your audience and usually what i like to do is have an overview of that particular book in the bible um, if nothing else read the scripture before and after so you're really understanding what is exactly that author speaking about um, so often in our faith culture, if you will, people are known to cherry pick out scriptures. Oh, that makes me feel good. Oh, that, you know, helps me feel better about my work life. I don't know. Pick any, any topic you can. But that's not necessarily how that scripture is meant to be applied. So context is super important whenever you're doing a Bible study, a word study, any of these kinds of things, scripture writing even. So double check your context. Make sure you have an understanding and dive in further. Often that is the best part of this, this whole process is all of these little, um, these little ways that these paths that I end up going on because I'm like, well, what does that mean? Well, what does that mean? Well, how does that make sense? Um, check multiple translations. Like I cannot stress enough how important those pieces are for your toolbox on really digging into scripture. Okay, so that's how I have approached this page here. Um, moving on, I did simple living. Um, clearly, I closed the book before my little uh, glaze dots were dried. Oh, well, it is what it is. Um, so simple living, <laughs> because it's simple, I kind of kept it that way, which I enjoyed. Uh, again, I define simple and living. I have my scriptures. And then here I just um, basically wrote out a prayer, if you will. Um, this, is, this is just based on all these scriptures. I went ahead and read through them. So I have an understanding of what simple living means pertaining to these scriptures. And I just wrote in, um, fill me with. So I could write, dear Lord, fill me with, or whatever, wh however I want it. But I chose to just say, fill me with prayer, a thankful heart, joy, mercy, praise, humility, love, truth, kindness. These are all words that, um, characteristics and attributes that I pulled from these different scriptures that really kind of helped me understand what does simple living mean. Because when I saw simple living, before I really dove into this, I was expecting scriptures that would talk about, you know, not needing a lot of materialistic things, um, not being busy schedules, um, not, um, name any of the things that complicate our life. And so I really hadn't thought about the way the, um, the way God wants us to live in simple living. And that is through continually being in prayer and to have a thankful heart and to be joyful in all circumstances. Um, so that this alone was so beneficial to me. And, um, I just really love this process. After I did this page is when I decided to turn this camera on and share it with you because I really hope that this would encourage you as well to give this a try. Um, we don't have to do these, um, you don't have to buy a bunch of Bible studies. You don't have to buy somebody else's book to tell you how to study the Bible or rather what to study in the Bible. Um, this alone sent me down this wonderfully long hour of Bible study that I had no anticipation of. I thought I was sitting down today to just get crafty. So I hope that 
encourages you. I hope you find some um, inspiration in just this piece alone. If you're still interested in seeing some more of the creative pieces, I'm going to flip back, start talking about how I got to all these pages, the way they're designed, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a process. Now, I haven't decided if I'm going to do the humility page or if I want to do the contentment page. I think I might land on doing this and filming a separate video for the contentment piece, um, but I will go ahead and try to remind myself when I'm doing editing to stamp this spot right here so that you know the first half of this video has kind of been my teaching, if you will, um, or my, my motivational talk, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, and then now I'm going to dive into the crafty side of it. Okay. So let me talk about the process I did here. What I did the other day was I sat down and I just did the backgrounds and the titles. So what I did was I took a, um, a couple of different stamps and I used, um, let's see what color did I use? I used golden from the stamp market. Um, this is such a pretty soft buttery kind of yellow. So I used that to just stamp some, this is a large floral stamp, some leaves, things like that. Over here, I used the same color and I used a stencil with those little um, dauber things, these little guys. And I have this stencil that has like these little um, rectangles and squares and triangles. They kind of look like houses. So I just imagine like this is the world. And then I did um, this really fun honeycomb on the back of this. No real reason. I just liked it. And then again on this page, I did some leaves and some acorns. I also then stamped out the title that I wanted for each page. And I used different fonts for that, um, different alphabet stamps. That was kind of fun. And then uh, that was kind of it for the base starting. So I got all four done so that I could sit down and not have to think about that piece of it. I also attached a tag to the top of each page with no idea what I was going to do. <laughs> so I had no idea what that was going to look like. Then when it was time to sit down and do this page, I started with this little cluster down here. Um, I have... I have a book that um, I inherited. Uh, it's a, I don't see it around my space anymore, but it's a, it's an older, I uh, can't even think of what it is. I think it's a concordance of some sort or uh, something to do with words. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, I was completely fine destroying it and ripping out some pages, but it's basically um, the Bible to some degree with also, I'm going to guess, um, Hebrew or Greek or whatever, whatever language it was originally written in or whatever language is on that page. Um, I'm probably making a mess of this whole thought process, but <laughs> it's that's what it is. That's it's a torn book page. OK. <laughs> um, and so I've just got some just made like a cluster. And then I just took some washi tape and did a little rip, a little rip there. And then stamps. I'm really trying to go stamp heavy in this whole book because I have so many stamps and I really, really want to play with them. So that's what I'm doing. I also used a stamp and I and I'm I'm using this book and this space for kind of practicing and playing and trying things out. So what I did was I took stamps and I actually used watercolor to um, create the color of the ink because I don't have this color ink and it was so close to this that I decided to try it with watercolors. Um, now I bled through a little, which I'm okay with, but I used it um, by painting it onto the stamp. And then stamping it down so I did not create a whole lot of water on my page. Because I had to rip a page out and reprint it because I tried to do some watercolor and I completely demolished the page. So uh, the lesson learned. Uh, over here on this side, I kept it even more simple. Um, so what I've been doing is doing all the writing. This I did the cluster first. But then um, I've been doing the writing. And then I've been doing the um, extra stamp. So I'd stamped in my... Um, my verses, my scripture here, and then I did my writing, and then I went back in and stamped additional things. That way I had more than enough space to do all the writing I wanted to. So for example, this page is heavy on writing. I have all of this writing on here. Then I went back in and I did a few stickers. I did a few stamps. Nice and simple. And then this page here is the page I did today. Um, for simple living, I used a sticker um, a, a little bit more of that torn book paper, a little scrap of paper. And this is a photo of my best friend's dad's farm. It's not a working farm. It's more of like a vacation home. Um, they raise, 
they kind of raise dogs, hunting dogs, or do hunting dog stuff there. But it's still an old farm. Um, and so I know what it is. You wouldn't be able to see that from where you're looking at right now. And even if I zoom it in, it's super tiny. But I know exactly what this is. And this farm space is so peaceful to me and just makes me think of what what does simple living look like doesn't have to have um kind of goes back to the original idea i have had um i kind of tied the two together with this photo of what truly stripped down simple living could look like imagine living on a farm where you're really your whole i don't know anything about farming so i'm i'm totally basing this off of like um stereotypes probably but i imagine you know it's a little bit more wholesome living where you're everything you're focused on has to be about the farm about the family about working together about doing things um uncomplicated so that you can just get the job done and i just love that picture i love that idea so that's why i use this little picture of a farm okay so that's how far i've gotten into this process so now i'm going to work on my humility page and I'll tell you a little bit about the pre-work I've done um, so that I can get more into the uh, crafty part, the writing part, all of that. So again, I went in to my study Bible and I've also used Bible Hub and Webster's Dictionary sometimes. And I went ahead and I looked up the scriptures I'm going to be writing. So I have my little scriptures here, which I'll be stamping out here shortly. But again, I started with the definition of humility. So humility means to show meekness, quality of being humble. So now what I did here and this one is I took the word humble and I went even further. Um, so humble in, I believe this is an adjective. No, this is adjective. This is verb. Either way, um, means to, to not think too highly of oneself, to bring low or prostate. Uh, also means not proud or haughty can imply lower social or economic status, meek or gentle. So I'm going to write all of that out onto this page. I also then found um, some additional scripture from the list that I have, and I'm gonna write that out. And it's pretty lengthy, it's James 4, 7 through 10. So I'm gonna need a lot of space to write that. So I'm gonna do all the writing first, and then I'm gonna come back in and do all of the um, creative decorating part. So I will go ahead and fast forward you while I do this writing. I won't make you watch it all. When I come back, I should have all the writing completed. I'm done with all of my writing for this page. Again, I have gone ahead and put the definition of humility, and then I went further to define humble. So when I got to this spot here, I kind of had to test out where my stamps were going to land, and then I put my further definitions. I also wrote out a longer set of scripture here. So I have James 4, 7 through 10. Um, I highly recommend you go and look that up and read it. And then I have the scriptures that I'll be writing later on in the book. Um, listed down here. So I could stop here and be totally happy with it, um, but it it needs some zhuzhing. So I'm going to go ahead and decorate this page up with a little bit of ephemera. So I don't know what it is about having a page like this to um, decorate, but I I don't know. I felt kind of like I didn't know where to start. So I already edited out quite a few moments of me really just auditioning quite a few things and I was really kind of struggling. So 
finally I landed on these hexagons, which I end up being very happy with. Um, but I pulled out these larger hexagons. These were just scraps I had left over from a different project. So when I built this kit, um, that is exactly what I did was I just grabbed different things from different projects I've worked on in the past. And I print and cut a few new things, but for the most part, a lot of this is just leftover bits from other projects. So I have these hexagons. I also try out a few larger pieces because it just seemed like this big, huge space that I wanted to work with. Um, but in the end, I'm gonna stick with the hexagons. So I've pulled out a couple here. And initially I had the, the blues, the greens, the, the deeper, I don't know what color it is, cranberry, pink, red, whatever it is. Um, and I additioned them back and forth. And ultimately I took that, that wood grained kind of um, deep rose pink color, whatever that is. <laughs> I'm terrible with color names. I took that off because one, I just really didn't like the little graphic that was on there. It didn't really fit. I felt like it all three should have that on there. And it was just too bold of a color. So at any rate, um, what I have now are these little hexagons. I just have to do a little trim work. And I'm really liking just kind of this I wouldn't call it monochromatic, but it's just this nice color tone that I have going. So next I go back into my ephemera just to kind of see what I have. And I know I want to start building up some clusters. So I have these three, three points here. So I, I pull out this yellow leaf. It's a little big, the, the scale doesn't quite right work right for me. So I go back in and I end up pulling out these black and white um, pieces, these floor or um, rather leaves that I have. And I really liked how that pulled in the um, the black ink from used with the title and it just kind of grounded all of the pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and balance everything out with just this black and white piece and um, move away from using any of those other leaves. Well, I should take that back because I am going to end up going back to those. But since I spoke about this book page that I have, I actually have the book now. Um, it is called an interlinear, interlinear, that is a tough word for me, Greek English New Testament um, with a Greek English lexicon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's an old, old book my grandparents gave to me um, when they were moving or cleaning up books or I don't know. But um, my grandmother will support me chopping it up. Because honestly, when I open it up to the middle, it falls apart. Um, so I'm pretty excited I have this. It's also a King James version, which is kind of interesting. Um, so at any rate, that's what the book was I was trying to explain earlier. So I've torn off a few bits and pieces, and I'm going to use those in my cluster, just working with the size and again, the scale. So I'm feeling pretty good about these cute little clusters. And I go ahead and I get, I also had to double check to see what the wording is because um, I don't want it to be like wording on there. If you look real close, that just, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but anyway, so I'm working on this cute little cluster at the top and I stapled this black leaf on here, black and white leaf, and immediately wish I hadn't done that. So I have to pull out the staple and I'll tell you what, trying to get those little tiny attacher staples back out is a chore, but I finally managed to get it. And I go into my stickers here and these are great. I print and cut these. These are from the Reset Girl. They are some honeys. And I grabbed this cute little heart sticker. And <laughs> I don't know why I do these things, but I decided to fussy cut this sticker while it was stuck to my finger. I did that again later, and I'll even mention that later in this video. And it was it was a total mess. But regardless, uh, I got it to work. So that cluster is all done. Cute. Love it. Moving on to the next one. I'm gonna go ahead and start um, committing to all of my pieces here so that I don't have to one lose anything on my desk and then I can just kind of move on with this. So I get this one done and I'm kind of staring at it thinking it needs something in the middle. What am I gonna do? And I would have loved to have had another heart to put on that, but I didn't really have one that was the right scale and I couldn't be bothered with going and printing and cutting any or looking for one or die cutting one or any of those things. So um, I really kind of struggled here and I went back through, I pull out some word fetty and this also didn't really work for me because I didn't want to add another like subtitle. I will in the end, you'll see that in the end of this video, but for now, I just really kind of struggled with adding any more words to the page. I mean, there's a lot of words on this page already. 
Um, but I did, I did go through them all. I looked through all my WordFetty. I even had pulled out those stickers that I had created or rather printed um, on some clear sticker paper, which those are fun to use, I will say. So I thought, okay, if I'm going to put one in the middle, do I put one at the bottom? And then I ditched that whole idea. And honestly, I had to edit this because I probably stared at the page for about a good 30 seconds to a minute. And then finally, I just found these leaves and I just hunk one down and I call it good. I can't be bothered wasting any more time thinking about this cluster. I have to move on. So done and done. And I actually really like it. I, th I think it turned out cute. So then I'm moving on to the bottom one here and I realized that the hexagon is cut strange. Like the way the pattern of the paper goes, it's a little wonky. So that took me a minute to work out how I wanted to do that. And then technical difficulties. Well, unfortunately, I had a microphone issue and my camera cut out, so I don't have the rest of the process um, from wherever the video cut out. But regardless, I will go ahead and just walk you through what I have created. So um, I had, like I said, finished all my wording got or writing, got that all done, and then I decided to just do these three little clusters. Um, I was really kind of struggling here though of what to put on top of here um, and just really kind of how to balance and finish it out. But in the end, I really like how it turned out. Um, I ended up with a couple of extra little clear stickers that I used. I really battled with getting those off the sheet. My silhouette did not cut them properly. So that was, oh, painstaking, but I got it accomplished. So I kept everything else pretty simple, just uh, embellished with some stickers, like I said, my little clusters here, I will not recommend fussy cutting stickers. Um, I'm glad you guys actually don't get to see that fiasco, but uh, I decided to fussy cut the sticker. And instead of cuss fussy cutting it while it was still on its backing sheet, no, I decided to take it off and then had a sticker stuck to my finger while I tried to cut. It was ridiculous. So probably for the best that the camera cut out. So the only last little finishing detail I need is this tag, which I keep struggling with when I get to this part part um, because uh, I don't really want to do another word or title. I have been putting the date on, but I've been doing that down here. So I'm going to do the date here, find my date stamp. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure what I'm going to put up here. Maybe I should do another leaf. I feel like that's kind of, that's a heart or a leaf. That's been my go-to. Let's see what I have in my little collection here. I really would like to use something. Okay, well, nothing there. Let's check this one. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to cut some more stuff because I created this kit, like I said, using my stash, but I'm not cheating that concept if I just print more digital pieces into stickers because I already have the sticker paper. It's in my stash. I own the collection. It's in my digital stash. Yeah, I have no reason not to. So I'll have to cut some more. Oh man, all I have is really this and that does not fit. I don't like that. So, hmm. Oh, I said I didn't want to do another word. I did do that on another one. Hey, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to just use this meaningful. I'm going to go. I'm going to Go outside of my comfort zone. I've said it before, if you've followed along on my channel, I take things way too literally when it comes to paper crafting and scrapbooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and forego that. Actually, I feel like this still makes sense because meaningful, this is a meaningful page. It's it's all meaningful learning, meaning, yeah, all that stuff. Okay, gonna go with that. And then I'm gonna stamp this in the same pink color I was using. Make sure I'm on the right date and it's not upside down. There. All right. So now I can put that in my book and call it good. All right. So I'll pop this in. I love this disc binding. It makes things so simple. There we go. So I have my four themes of contentment scripture writing that I'll be doing this season. I have gratitude, separation from the world, simple living, and humility. I love it. I'm super pleased. This was 
both very, um, uh, educational is the wrong word, <laughs> fulfilling in both the study part and also in the creative process. So I love it. So I will uh, probably film another video, like I said, where I'm going to encapsulate this whole thing in the word contentment and do a study here. So I will um, have that for you to look forward to. And in the meantime, I hope that you found this to be encouraging. I hope that you found inspiration. I hope that maybe you have another tool for your toolbox of Bible study and just getting into the word. So thanks for being with me today, friends. And I um, would love a thumbs up if you like this video. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. And finally, don't forget to hit that little bell. I will uh, I'll see you next time, friends. Be well. Bye-bye.